A very good day to you and welcome to the program. It's just fantastic to have you on the farm. We're sitting in the shade. It's an autumn day. I'm sitting right outside my prayer room and I want to share the good news with you. What are you and I called to do? I believe there's only one thing. We are called to prepare the way. To prepare the way for who? To prepare the way for the coming of the Lord. Oh, folks, I cannot wait for that day. It's going to be the most exciting day in our lives. I've heard some people say that our children will, might even be the ones that will usher in the Lord Jesus Christ into the kingdom of God. If we look at uh, Mark chapter 1, the gospel of Mark chapter 1, two verses, verse 2 and verse 3. And this is what it says. As it is written in the prophets... Behold, I send my messenger before your face who will prepare your way before you. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord and make his paths straight. Now, of course, that was John the Baptist. And you know, Jesus said of John, he said, there's never been a man born from the womb of a woman who is greater then John the Baptist. Now, John the Baptist prepared the way for the Lord. I want to tell you in these last days, young man, young lady, old granny, granddad, we need to prepare the way of the Lord. We need to be bold. We need to be humble, but we need to be forthright. We need to prepare people's hearts for the coming of the Lord. John the Baptist was a no-nonsense man. You knew he was coming. You knew exactly who he was from way off. The Bible says that he comes in the spirit of Elijah. Now remember King Ahab said, O troubler of Israel, what do you want from us? He recognized him immediately. An evil king by the name of Ahab saw the man of God coming from a distance, that hairy man with a leather belt. Folks, John the Baptist was the same. When uh, the uh, King Herod came into Jerusalem, and you can just see that bony finger of John the Baptist pointing at him because he was an adulterer. He had been living with his brother's wife. He said of John the Baptist, it was said he admired John the Baptist from a distance. You see, he couldn't publicly admire him, but he admired him. Why? Because he was making the way straight for the Lord. You and I, by our lifestyle, have got to proclaim the good news. People must know how a believer is supposed to live, a follower of Jesus. We cannot go with the crowd. We cannot, folks. We are different. Why is it, young person, that you are so desperately trying to live as close as you can to the world? That's unacceptable. The world should be trying to live as close to you as it can. Keep yourself pure. Keep your, your principles, your godly principles upright. Don't fraternize with, with darkness. People must know from a long way away that that man, that woman is a child of God. You know, before I became a believer, I used to look with yearning to try and be, desiring to become a Christian like some of the people that I, I looked up to. I, I, I didn't want them to become like me. I would invite them in to the pub and they wouldn't come in. And I was so pleased. I was hoping they would never come in. As soon as they come in, then we mock them because they are compromisers. I'm talking about a situation that doesn't have to be a pub. It could be anywhere. When you start to lower your standards to try and be accepted by the world, you've lost it. The world must come up to your standard. You need to prepare the way like John the Baptist. You need to be absolutely fearless for the Lord Jesus Christ. Because I'm telling you now, He's not coming soon. He is on His way, I tell you. So until the next time, keep walking the talk. Goodbye. For more information, please visit angusbucken.com.